When that black bear slaughtered those three teenage boys, they said it was so rare that it would never happen again. But then it did to a couple who were camping on an island right next door. Thursday, October 11th, 1991. Raymond Jakub Baskes, 32, and his girlfriend Carola Freya, 48, were both killed and eaten by a black bear on a canoe trip to an island in Algonquin Provincial Park. The community was just starting to get over the tragedy that happened 13 years ago when three teenage boys were killed and eaten by what the authorities said was a black bear. Raymond and Carola drove in, excited for their five-day backcountry trip. They drove in and parked at Opiongo Algonquin Outfitters. After gathering their things and packing their canoe, they started on their 45-minute paddle to Bates Island. Bates Island was in the middle of a very large lake in a very popular place in the park. If there was anywhere that should have been safe, it was Bates Island. It was almost in visual range of the outfitter. They pushed off with their paddles and they began their adventure. The friendly goodbye they said to the staff and the polite waves they gave to their fellow paddlers were the last time that anyone would see Raymond and Carola alive again. Five days later, Jerry the manager of the outfitter was consulting the log of gear that should be coming in. He realized that the couple that was camping on Bates Island didn't return their stuff yet. He was concerned. He got in a boat. And since that island was so close by, he drove to check on them. The closer he got to that island, the eerier it felt. He saw the boat. The closer he got, he saw all of the gear. And as he got really close to that island, he even saw their food sitting out in the open, untouched, and it looked like it was there for days. We may never know what Jerry really saw or what Jerry felt to make him turn around, gun it back to the store and call the rangers. But that's exactly what he did. The park rangers and the provincial police geared up, packed their boats, and headed to Bates Island. That was the end of civilian knowledge of what happened there. Based on the presence alone of the police, the investigators, the pathologists, everyone guessed that those two were either dead or gone. Over six months went by, and all the community had was almost non-existent news coverage, gossip, and speculation to go on. Finally, the internal newsletter of Algonquin Park publicized the story. In their spring 1992 edition, a full explanation of what the authorities said happened on that island was given. It said the rangers arrived at the island. They immediately inspected the site and they found untouched food, in particular an open tray of ground beef sitting at the campsite. Then a broken canoe paddle was located. As they looked around, they located drag marks between four temporary burial sites. The final of the four rested 375 feet away from the original campsite. The authorities said the animal was standing right there at the final burial point, a black bear. They immediately engaged and brought the animal down. What was left of Raymond and Carola's bodies was sent for autopsy. The bear was examined by the Ministry of Natural Resources and the University of Guelph. The results came in. Raymond and Carola were killed both by a single blow to the head. The bear was examined thoroughly. They found no disease, no brain abnormality, no injury, no other condition that would predispose it to unnatural aggression, and certainly no starvation. 
It was estimated to be eight years old, 308 pounds, and a male bear that was never tagged or documented in the park ever before. They found long bruises on the bear's body as well. The investigators brought together all of the evidence, and they believed this was the scenario that occurred. Raymond and Carola arrived at their site on Bates Island, unpacked their canoe, brought out their food for supper, and prepared their campsite, only to be attacked by a predatory black bear. They believed that Carola was attacked first, and that Raymond grabbed the canoe paddle and broke it off of the bear, trying to fend it off. After a struggle, the bear delivered a death blow to each of their heads. It then proceeded to feast on them, ignoring the food and the ground beef at the campsite. It feasted and then buried, feasted and buried and repeated until the fourth and final resting place of their bodies. A man-eating black bear is almost unheard of. A man-eating black bear that slaughters multiple people at once is almost unbelievable. And to have two of those in the same neighborhood is beyond belief. What happened on that island? Was there a bear that was so intent on human flesh that it ignored open ground beef for five days? Or did something else happen on that island?